The Hunnic interlude in Indian history lasted for two centuries. It was around the end of 4th century AD that the Huns had established their foothold in the Indian subcontinent. During this period, they controlled the region of northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. And we see that from this period onwards to the end of 5th century AD, the Huns were not able to make deep inroads into the Indian subcontinent. This was mainly because of the presence of the Gupta Empire. The Gupta Empire and its military strength did not allow the Huns to move from their base and conquer large chunk of northern India. But by the end of 5th century AD, the Gupta Empire had begun to disintegrate. And this decline in the Gupta power allowed the Huns to conquer large chunk of the Indian subcontinent. We see that around this time, that is the end of 5th century AD, that the Huns started their invasion of India. Torman, the leader of the Alkan Huns, for the first time conquered large chunk of northern India at the start of 6th century AD. But these conquests of the Huns would not last long. We see that Torman was defeated during the end of his reign and when his son Mihirkula succeeded him, he suffered a significant defeat by the hands of Indian power around 532 AD. This defeat meant that now the Huns retreated back to their original base in Gandhar and Punjab. So what we see is that the region of northwestern India was under the Hunnic occupation for a long period of time. But this was not true for other parts of the Indian subcontinent. Here the Hunnic rule did not last long. Even though in these areas the Hunnic rule did not last long, but what we see is that in the whole northern part of the Indian subcontinent, the Hunnic invasion brought political and cultural changes. If we look at the political change, the most significant change was the disappearance of the Gupta Empire. Although it is true that the Huns were not solely responsible for the decline of the Gupta Empire, but they did play an important role. So what we see is that when the Gupta Empire ended, there were new political realities that were emerging. These were small kingdoms that were emerging in different parts of northern India. But all of these powers were not in a position to play as significant role as the Gupta did. Another change which we see during this period is the dynamic political situation. The regional kingdoms that were rising after the decline of the Gupta Empire were also falling very rapidly. The best example of this are the Aulikaras. The Aulikaras had emerged at the end of 5th century AD. But what we see is that during the end of 6th century AD, the Aulikaras had disappeared from central India. So this rapid rise and rapid decline of the Aulikaras suggest how dynamic political situation was during this period. The significant change which this period experienced can also be seen in the decline of old political and trading centers. If we look at the period in the start of the Gupta Empire, we find that we have the cities of Kaushambi, Mathura, Ujjain, Vidisha, etc. But during this period, these centers had declined. We all know about the fate of Kaushambi and how after the attack of Torman, the city never recovered. A similar decline was also experienced by these other cities as well. So these old political centers and also also trading centers that had played a major role in the politics of northern India had now declined. Now what we see is that in their place new political centers emerged. So we have the emergence of the city of Mandasaur, Vallabhi, Sthaneshwar and particularly Kanyakubj or Kannauj. The rise of Kannauj or Kanyakubj is particularly important during this period. In the earlier period, we find that the political center of northern India was the region of eastern UP and Bihar. But around this time, we see that this political center is shifting westwards. And the rise of Kanyakubj and its greater importance is the best example of this shift. We can see that from this period onwards, it was the city of Kannauj which will play an important role and will also be regarded as the center, political center of much of the northern India. 
earlier it was the city of Patliputra which had played this role. We can see this in the case of ancient India during the time of the Mauryas and even earlier. So what we see here is that there was this westward shift of the political center of northern India. So these are some of the significant political changes that happened in the aftermath of the Huna invasion. Now there is one important point which we should keep in mind. We know that these changes took place after the Huna invasion. But how important the role of the Hunas was is a matter of debate and also interpretation. It is hard to quantify how important role these Hunas played bringing these changes. So this we should keep in mind. Now when we look at the cultural changes, we find that here things are even more subjective. According to Hans Baker, who has worked on the Hunas, he argues that the new kingdoms that emerged after the Huna invasion all confessed Shaivism, even the Hunas themselves. We especially see in the territories of the former Gupta Empire, where once Vaishnavism was the dominant religious tradition, now it was Shaivism that had gained prominence. At a cultural level, Hans Baker argues that in the arts, it become visible for instance in the fixation of iconographic idiom, in religion, in the standardization of the liturgy, and in society on the whole, in the belief in and pervasive use of incantations, mantras, narrowly prescribed for each and every occasion. Now, when Baker talks about these cultural changes, he does mention that these changes were not brought by these Hunas. He argues that these changes had begun long before the arrival of the Hunas. But what the invasion of the Hunas did was it accelerated these changes. So the invasion of the Hunas acted as a catalyst to these cultural changes. So this is the whole argument of Hans Baker. Now, what do you think about this argument? Do write in the comments. Now, if you want to know about the Hanik invasion, I have covered the entire history of the Huna invasion in this playlist. So please do watch it. Thank you for watching.